Hello students, uh, welcome back to YouTube channel of St. Wilfred's uh, College of Arts, Commerce and Science. Today's my topic is anodic oxidation. Uh, in that first we are going to see about content. In content, there are uh, some topics such as anodic oxidation, after that oxidation of alkyl benzene, Colbe reaction, non-Colbe reaction, and so Shono oxidation. Okay, so let's start with the anodic oxidation. Anodic oxidation is also known as a electro oxidation. Okay, or electrochemical oxidation. It, it is nothing but a technique which is used for waste water treatment most of the time. Anodic reaction, it is nothing but a half reaction of a oxidization releasing electrons for example a metal turns into a metal ion in a reaction okay oxidation is nothing but what it is nothing but a loss of electron during a reaction any metal or metal ion it uh, going to lose its electron okay and this reaction will take place at the anode so it is called as the anodic oxidation if we go for the electrolysis this reaction okay electrolysis then there are two electrodes first one is a cathode which is a positively charged anode these are nothing but a negatively charged electrodes right after that we are going to add some electrolyte in that after that the reaction will start and in reaction if any compound or any metal atom which is losing its electron and it is uh, forming a, a metallic uh, film or oxide film on a metal atom or on that electrode, then it is called as an anodic oxidation reaction. The most general layout comprises uh, two electrodes operating as an anode and cathode connected to a power supply, mostly in the electrolysis. When an energy is input and a sufficient uh, supporting electrolyte are provided to the system, strong oxidizing strong oxidizing species are formed which interact with contaminants and degrade them after that uh, as we know that anodic oxidation it is nothing but an electrochemical methods electro means we are going to use a power supply for that and chemicals is nothing but your electrolyte which we are uh, adding for this process for the production of oxide oxidation reaction means addition of oxygen oxygen is going to form and removal of a hydrogen atom from the metallic substance. It removes electrons from a substance and oxidizes the anode. Anode electron oxidize. Ho After that, anodic oxidation increases corrosion resistance and wear resistance and provide better adhesive for paint primers and glues than does bare metals. After that, we are going to see our second uh, Topping that is oxidation of alkyl benzene. Okay, in that what we are going to do, we are going to do reaction of alkyl benzene with oxidizing reagent. Oxidizing reagent uh, are those which uh, undergo this reaction to oxidize the reactant. Okay, in at here we are going to see two react that is alkyl benzene and potassium permanganate. If we are using potassium permanganate, potassium permanganate. It is an oxidizing reagent, so it will oxidize that alkyl benzene component and itself potassium permanganate undergoes reduction reaction. It is the, uh, this one is the actual definition of a oxidizing reagent. And uh, in last, uh, after reaction of alkyl benzene with potassium permanganate, we will get oxidation. Oxidation reaction will be there and our last product will be benzoic acid. After that, the position directly adjacent to the aromatic group. It is called as a benzylic position. And this reaction only works if there is a hydrogen attached to the carbon. Means for uh, oxidation reaction to happen, we need that type of compound in which the adjacent carbon atom has a hydrogen atom. Okay. After that, let's see the reaction in which we are going to see our reactant that is alkyl benzene. When undergo oxidation reaction in presence of a potassium permanganate. What happens? That methyl group, if you are able to see, able to see there are three hydrogen atoms, right? In product, there is only one hydrogen atom. Means there is removal of two hydrogen atoms and addition of a two hydrogen atom will take place. So two oxygen atom. Addition of a oxygen atom and removal of a hydrogen atom. It is nothing but an definition of a oxidation. So we can say that 
this reaction is nothing but an oxidation reaction which is take place at the anode anode which is our negatively charged electrode uh, where our this reaction will take place that our reactant alkyl benzene is converted to benzoic acid okay in presence of a potassium permanganate after that next one is a kolbe reaction where we are going to see kolbe reaction which is also an anodic uh, oxidation reaction where uh, that kolbe reaction is also known as a kolbe exchemit reaction it is a type of addition reaction where we are going to add some reactant in that okay uh, and this reaction is named after a herman kolbe and rudolf schmidt which are two scientists okay so we can uh, combinedly call it as a kolbe schmidt reaction when uh, okay let's see what happened in this reaction first when phenol is treated with a sodium hydroxide so our two reactant will be phenol after that sodium hydroxide when they this to react with each other it will form a phenoxide ions okay phenoxide ion will be generated and this phenoxide ion which is generated it is a more reactive than phenol which our which is our reactant so we can say that when we are going to react phenol with sodium hydroxide that phenoxide ion which is and our intermediate or uh, our product which is more reactive than the phenol toward electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction if we compare phenol and phenoxide ion then phenol is less reactive for electrophilic substitution reaction and phenoxide ion is more um, uh, it uh, gives electrophilic substitution reaction hence it undergoes electrophilic substitution reaction with carbon dioxide which is a weak electrophile after formation of phenoxide ion this phenoxide ion again undergo a uh, reaction with the carbon dioxide it will um, react with carbon dioxide which will be our electrophilic substitution reaction and here we are using carbon dioxide which is a weak electrophile okay let's see the example for kolbe reaction first we are taking phenol after that we are adding sodium hydroxide okay uh, sodium hydroxide and carbon dioxide after addition of carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide will act on the adjacent carbon atom which has a hydrogen atom as we seen that uh, our uh, condition was that uh, the adjacent carbon should have a hydrogen atom right so that um, carbon dioxide will react first with this carbon okay after that the na molecule from sodium hydroxide will act on uh, again carbon dioxide and uh h molecule here our oh from uh, sodium hydroxide that is oh hydroxy molecule and h from this phenol h and oh will remove as a water molecule okay water molecule as a by product it will remove and we will get a sodium salt of this compound which we are also going to call as a phenoxide ions okay after reaction with h2so4 we are going to react it with a h2so4 it will give us a our final product okay which will uh, which will um, in which addition of carboxylic acid is take place if you are able to see our phenolic group is there okay in reactant and product phenol phenolic group will be there only carboxylic acid is added carboxylic acid functional group is added here so what happen this h2so4 react with this to na molecule addition of h will take place and removal of this 2 na will take place after that this uh, reaction will form a by product which is na2so4 and this two hydrogen atom will attracted toward one hydrogen will attracted toward this nitro oxygen atom and second hydrogen atom will attracted toward this oxygen atom so we will finally get a compound with in which there will be a, a hydroxy group always and a aromatic group will be there okay next uh, applications of kolbe reaction okay there are two uh, applications first one is uh, let's see when potassium hydroxide is used in a kolbe reaction four hydroxy benzoic acid can be accessed or can be formed means whenever we are going to react that potassium hydroxide okay if you are taking phenol and we are using phenol, potassium hydroxide as we said in last reaction we see we are using sodium hydroxide if in place of that sodium hydroxide if we use potassium hydroxide our product will be four hydroxy benzoic acid okay and this one is the important precursor for parabens 
after that second application is kolbe reaction can also be used for industrial synthesis of three hydroxy two naphthoic acid which is common precursor for azo dyes and pigment this uh, product which is three hydroxy two naphthoic acid it is most of the time you are uh, we are going to use for a dyeing dyeing for uh, purpose dyes and for the pigment after that next one is the mechanism of a kolbe reaction how that reaction is happen let's see first we are going to take our reactant which is a phenol after that we are going to add potassium or sodium hydroxide in that what happened that oh molecule from that hydro, uh, uh, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide will react with the hydrogen molecule it will remove that hydrogen molecule it will attract that hydrogen molecule toward himself so water molecule will remove and hydrogen it will remove in the form of proton means in the form of a h plus so it will gives its electron pair to oxygen molecule so there is a negative charge because there is one electron pair which is shared or um shared by this hydrogen atom so we will finally get an phenoxide ion okay next again we are going to add an uh, na compound and sodium uh, sorry carbon dioxide in that so that na will form uh, one bond with oxygen and second bond with the carbon dioxide molecule after that this negatively charged carbon atom it will uh, okay here we can see that negatively charge is shared here so because of there is a c double bond o group and this double bond will be shifted toward here on this carbon atom right so there will be two electron and because of that this carbon atom have a negative charge after that what will happen we are going to add carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide the carbon possessing electro positive center so the negatively charged uh, carbon atom it will attack on this carbon atom which is a electro positive after attack on that the bond between carbon and oxygen it will shift toward the oxygen and it will form a electron pair on that okay you can see that there is a electron pair means negative charge means there is one electron pair present okay after that what will happen that carbon attack here so we will get this type of compound after that the hydrogen atom which is present on that carbon atom will remove okay it will remove by giving his electron pair to here after that this hydrogen atom which is removed from here it will attracted by this oxygen atom which is a electronegative atom so it will uh, attract that hydrogen toward himself and it will form a hydroxy group here we will finally get a one uh, hydroxy group here after that we are again adding h3 o molecule here h3 o molecule what will happen this oxygen which is a electronegative atom so it will abstract one proton which is a h plus molecule from this uh, h3 o molecule so our h2 o will form here after that hydrogen is attracted toward this oxygen atom so here also one hydroxy group will form this complete uh, group is nothing but your carboxylic acid group and this one is your hydroxy group so finally we will get our uh, product which is nothing but an salicylic acid so kolbe reaction is nothing but an oxidation reaction in which we are going to add oxygen molecule with the help of sodium or potassium hydroxide and carbon dioxide okay let's see next that is the non kolbe reaction okay non kolbe reaction is nothing but reaction which leads to ethers or ester are often referred as the hopper moes reaction it is nothing but a second reaction we are going to see hopper moes reaction while the production of olefin is called as a non kolbe electrolysis contrary to the kolbe dimerization reaction lower current densities lead to the formation of a carbenium ions and promote the hopper moist or non kolbe reaction let's see the reaction what will happen we are going to see two alkyl groups here after that what will happen that two alkyl groups uh, react with each other and will form this type of compound okay this uh, this one is called as an disproportion reaction this proportion reaction and uh, finally we will get a kolbe product how we will get that kolbe product we are going to use these two radicals if you are able to see there is going a radical form right free radical is there so that free radical uh, again react with each other two free radicals will react with each other and form a kolbe product after that we if we lost one electron form here if you are able to see there is only one electron here right if that electron is also lost then we will get a positive charge here right positive charge here after that uh, addition of a water molecule we will get a hopper moist product okay 
and if we add h plus molecule in that we will get a non pole b product okay this one is nothing but our reaction that when we are going to take this free radical type of compound and one electron is lose we will get cation form okay after uh, getting cation form we are going to add one proton molecule in that after addition of this proton molecule what will happen we will get our final product which is nothing but an pole b product this uh, this one synthesis will show you three type of reaction that is first one pole b reaction second one is a whole for hoist product and last one is a non pole b product okay next see sono oxidation sono oxidation its name oxidation will suggest that it is nothing but an oxidation reaction addition of oxygen atom will take place and removal of a hydrogen atom will take place so let's see what is sono oxidation reaction it is nothing but an uh, one classic organic electrochemistry reaction where an n acyl amine is oxidized means our reactant here is n acyl amine we are, we are going to oxidize it okay so after oxidation it will form an aluminium ion but for oxidation we need to add some oxidizing reagent in that okay and after adding that oxidizing reagent that n acyl amine will react with that oxidizing reagent it will oxidize this n acyl amine and our product will be aluminium ion which can be uh, captured by various nucleophiles that aluminium ion after reacting with nucleophile we will get a uh, numerous type of a product next one uh, let's see the reaction of a sono oxidation uh, okay let's see this one is our reactant as we said we are going to see an acyl amine okay an acyl amine under electrolysis in presence of a muoh muoh is nothing but your methanol right when it react with methanol that methoxy group that is meo will attack on this carbon atom after formation of a aluminium ion this reaction will take place a first reaction will be an electrolysis reaction that n acyl amine will convert it to the aluminium ion after that we are going to add meoh so after addition of that meoh we will finally get uh, get a compound in which our methoxy will methoxy group will be added thank you